Um, this morning I want us to consider a couple of scriptures as we come to the end of the year and we also um, celebrate the birth of Christ. Um, I want us to focus on the goodness of the Lord and also the happenings during the time of the birth of Jesus and take some lessons and uh, pray through them this morning. Uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we bless you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness. We thank you for bringing us to the time of the end of the year. We thank you for this morning as we come into your presence. We ask Holy Spirit to put a bit to pray. You will also be to go Amen. I want us to um, read uh, a verse of scripture, um, Psalm 65, verse 11. Psalm 65, verse 11. Uh, and this is the word of God. That thou crownest, or you crown the year with your goodness, your path drop fatness. You crown the year with your goodness, and the New King James will say, and your paths drip with abundance. This morning, I want us to to pray that as the year comes to an end, we have expectations from the Lord for this year, 2022, uh, to enjoy the goodness of the year. December crowns the year and we want to pray to the Lord that as we are a few days to the end of the year we want to pray that the Lord will crown the year with his goodness that our paths will drip with abundance our paths will drop with happiness the goodness of God is available for us every morning. And the Lord is also saying that He crowns the year with His goodness. Therefore, this morning I want us to spend some time to pray for ourselves, for the church, and for the country that the Lord will crown the year with goodness. Heavenly Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this year, 2022. We thank you for your goodness towards us every month of the year, from January to now. Even as you bring December to the We thank you for your faith that you found the year with your goodness. We pray to you that God, every goodness that you have for in terms of producing, in terms of promotion, in terms of health, in every area of our life, in our spirit, in, in our spiritual capacity, we put in the name of Jesus. That every one of us, every one of us, in this nation, we pray that we shall be your goodness. As we come to the end of the day, we pray that every life is protected in the name of Jesus. Every life is protected. The heart of the Lord is on that we shall experience your goodness. We shall experience your goodness in multiple ways, in several ways. In miracles. 
battles in the name of Jesus. We pray that as we come to the end of the year, let your word come true concerning us. That you crown the year with your goodness and your heart with abundance in us. We bless you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to um, consider this concerning the uh, the birth of Christ. Um, many times and every year, um, as we come through Christmas, we hear the word of God, and sometimes it just becomes like scriptures we've heard over and over again. But today, I want us to apply two things. Uh, to our lives. Uh, I want us to read Luke chapter 1 verse 11 to 18. Luke 1, 11 to 18. Now the birth of Christ was a time when we saw a lot of prophecy come to two families. The family of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and then the family of Joseph and Mary. Um, Luke 1, 11 to 18, and I'm reading. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And he's talking about Zechariah. Well, please. And when Zechariah saw him, that is the angel of the Lord, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son who shall be called John. And you shall... Have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his death. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink wine. And for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. 17 and 18, please. And he shall go before and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. <clears throat> okay. Now the, the lesson I want us to draw from this uh, these. Now, first of all, Eli um, Zechariah was a priest, um, and so compared to most people in Israel at the time, he was closer to God. He could go into the, the temple to offer sacrifice on behalf of the people. Now, this is somebody who was old had been praying that he would have a child, and the child was not coming. And he was in the presence of God, but he did not expect to hear from God. He did not expect a visit from an angel. And, and so an angel appeared to him and told him that his prayer had been answered but he could not believe. Even though he was in the temple, 
in the presence of God. And yet he was not mindful of the presence of God. I want us to contrast that with Mary from verse 26 to 34, the same Luke chapter 1. So concerning um, Mary, it says, And in the sixth month the angel went from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly, rejoice highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Um, verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom where there will be no end. Then Mary said unto the, said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? Okay. So Mary was a young girl. She wasn't a priest like Zechariah. An angel appeared to her. Uh, we don't know which time of the day, but it's obvious that it wasn't like Mary was having quiet time, or Mary was praying, or Mary was reading her Bible, that it just happened that the angel of the Lord visited her unexpectedly. Now, Mary wasn't afraid of what the angel or, or the fact that an angel had appeared to her. Her concern was the manner of greeting, and that is what made her confused. Um, the lesson I'm drawing from this to share with all of us is, whenever it gets to Christmas, we can focus so much on the enjoyment, on the food, on the family meetings, on the parties, on the visits to family members, etc., etc. And we can easily lose out on the visitation of the Lord. For Zechariah, it happened in church. For Mary, it happened outside church. But I want us to go through this Christmas being mindful of the fact that the birth of Christ had God bringing his direction, his word to families. And we should be alert and be mindful that the Lord can appear to us in church. It can be children's service. It can be children ministering. But through that, the Lord will give us a word. It can be at work. It can be at home. It can be on the way, you know, out than about. It can be in our sleep. The Lord can bring us a word. And so during this time of Christmas, as we celebrate the birth of Christ, let's be mindful that the Lord can speak to us and let's be expectant that we will receive a word from the Lord, receive of his goodness for the Kariah, it was something he has been praying about. I believe that it is a good time to pray to the Lord that as we remember his birth, as he did for Zechariah and Elizabeth, any good thing that we are expecting from him, that he will answer the prayer at this time. I want us to uh, spend some time to, to, to pray about that to pray to the Lord 
that in this time of um, Christmas, we shall not miss out on the presence of the Lord. Both when we meet as a congregation and when we are not meeting as a congregation, that we shall be mindful of the presence of the Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we go through Christmas, that we shall be mindful of your presence. We shall be mindful of your presence, both when we meet together at the church and when we are not at church. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in the name of Jesus that your presence will be with us. Your presence will be with us, and we shall be mindful of your presence. We also pray to you, O Lord, that just as you answered the peculiar needs of the Zariah, Lord, we pray that everything that we have brought before you in prayers all these years, we ask, O Lord, that you answer us just as you did for the Zariah. In Jesus' name. May. Okay. Uh, quickly, I want us to look at verse 57 and 59 of Luke 1. Verse 57 and 59. Um, so 57, now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son where her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the sixth day, and they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zechariah. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. Now, this this miracle I find very outstanding, um, very wonderful. That the angel appears to Zechariah. Zechariah is dumb. Zechariah doesn't pass any message to his wife, onto his wife. And then when they come to ask the the mother, that what shall the child's name be called? She mentions the exact name that the angel had told Zechariah. And it tells me about even how Elizabeth herself was also very alert and also expectant to receive from the Lord. And then I want us to also look at Mary in Luke chapter 2 verse 6. Luke chapter 2 verse 6. So it was while they were there, that's in Bethlehem, that they, this were completed for her to be delivered. Um, and she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for the, the end. Um, so that is a confirmation that for Mary also, that which the Lord appeared to her, she also received it. My prayer for all of us as we come to the end of the year, as we come into Christmas, is that the Lord will bless us. It will not just be a time of rejoicing that the Lord sent His Son to us, but just as the Lord met the needs of two families in a miraculous way by bringing them the Word of God, the Lord will do so in our lives. We shall not end the year 2022 just going through the motion, rejoicing and singing, but we shall receive each one of 